Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Lutheran Church. We're so excited to have you here today to worship with us. And if you happen to be visiting our church this morning, we just ask you might take a moment and fill out one of the visitor's cards in front of you and drop it into the offering plate as it comes around. We'd like to be able to say thank you for being with us here this morning. We have sympathies this morning we want to send, send out to Vicki Hancock and her family. Vicki's brother uh, passed away recently, and Harold Dorr and his family as well. Harold's mother passed away recently. Plus, Calver, uh, Karen Alvarud and her family, Karen's brother Robert, just passed away this last week as well. Please keep them in your prayers uh, as they are going through a bit of a rough time. We're looking for volunteers uh, for a Woyaton Church Project. We're continuing to build the retreat center in phases, and it looks like uh, things are going to start going up in the air. And so we need to do some framing and that kind of thing on April 6th. That is a week from yesterday. So if you would uh, be willing to help uh, bring your own hammer to this event, and uh, just you don't even have to be able to pound nails, just come. And uh, we'd love to do that together. Uh, if uh, you would like to know more about that or just get signed up, just see Pastor David about it. And there's a sign-up sheet back at the ministry center. Uh, we've already signed up five of you, so you might want to go look. No, I'm just kidding. Just go out and sign up afterwards, and it'll be a fun day. Speaking of Pastor David, happy belated birthday. Yesterday was his birthday, and so you know what? Right? It's time to sing. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear David. Happy birthday to you. Second verse. Just kidding. <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, this, we're going to be looking for spring flowers to decorate our altar for Easter. And so if you would like to help out with that, uh, again, there's a sign up at the ministry center. Uh, if you'd just like to sign up to bring some flowers, uh, not bring, just sign up to sponsor some flowers, $10, and then we'll get them all rounded up and brought in and decorate the entire altar area for Easter. It's beautiful. The deadline to do that is April 14th. So we've got a couple weeks to do that yet. Calvary in Action, uh, busy, busy, busy group. They're doing their project hygiene kits this month, and they're for the Hope Center. And perhaps you've seen out here their reception, receptacle area for those things, the small uh, trial size kind of soaps and shampoos and things like that that hotels have. Um, would love to have you bring some of those in, put them in the, in the bin. And then also, if you don't have those things, just bring coffee or Toilet paper, coffee grounds, or toilet paper. Those are things they can always use. So um, if you would um, like to help with that, that'd be great. We're going to assemble uh, all of those things, uh, those kits, uh, next Sunday in the fellowship hall after second service at 1015. So come on over and help us with that project as well. The LSS campaign for Hope Giving envelopes are in the back of the sanctuary. If you missed that last week and you would like to, to still help them with their great program, uh, just pick one of these up afterwards and you can uh, contribute and just drop it into the offering plate as well. Summer Wednesdays are starting at Calvary this summer. We're going to continue Wednesdays through the summer, starting with May 1st. And we're going to go through, it uh, looks like about 13 uh, Wednesdays we're going to be doing. And so we'd encourage you to come to those as well through the summer. A lot of people have really enjoyed that. We'll have dinner at 5 o'clock p.m., and then we'll have worship at 6.30 uh, right here at Calvary. So uh, that doesn't change anything with the weekend service except for the summer outer hours that we normally have. A couple last things that I've got. Uh, there's a fundraiser quilt sale that's going on in the narthex. You might have noticed it when you came in. It's to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Chapel in the Hills. And so if you'd like to buy some uh, raffle tickets after service, all that money is going to go to the Chapel in the Hills. It's going to help them to continue to, to uh, have this vibrant ministry that they have there. But uh, then they'll draw out 
the winner of that quilt in July at their festivity. They have about a week of festivities going on for, for that as well. So I think those are all of the announcements that I have. So we'll begin our service this morning uh, with the invocation, blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And now we'll have our morning hymn. Our opening hymn is number 705, God of Grace and God of Glory.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people. join me in the prayer of the day. God of compassion, you welcome the wayward, and you embrace all with your mercy. By our baptism, clothe us with garments and your grace, and feed us at the table of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And at this time, we'll have special music.
and seas that are shaken and stirred can be calmed and broken for my regard. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And it is well with me. Far be it from me to not believe Even when my eyes cannot see And this mountain that's in front of me Will be thrown into the midst of the sea Through it all, through it all My eyes are on you And it is well, it is well to let it go, my soul, and trust in him. The waves and wind still know his name. So let it go, my soul, and trust in him. The waves and wind still know.
a reading from Joshua 5, verses 9 through 12. By celebrating the Passover and eating the produce of the promised land, instead of the miraculous manna that had stained them in the desert, the Israelites symbolically bring their 40 years of wilderness wandering to an end at Gilgal. The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt, and so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on that day, and they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. A reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. One way to describe the gospel is the promise that in Christ everything is transformed into newness. All mistakes, all deliberate sins, all old history is reconciled with Christ's resurrection. This is Paul's strong message to the congregation in the city of Corinth. For now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old is passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, and so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Here ends the reading. We stand for the gospel acclamation. Let your steadfast love come to us, O Lord. Save us as you promised, we will trust in your word. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter. You may be seated, this is a really long gospel. Now all the tax collectors and the sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling, saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired him out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him into the fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly fill himself with pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have enough bread to eat and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of those hired hands. So he set off, and he went to the father. And while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. 
he ran and he put his arms around him and he kissed him. Then the son said to the father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the slaves, quickly, bring out a robe, the best one. Put it on him, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked him what was going on. He replied, your brother has come back, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, listen, for all these years I've been with you, working like a slave for you. I have never disobeyed your command." Yet you have never even given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who devoured your property with debt prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you were always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and has been found. Here is the gospel of the Lord. Will the kids come up and join me up here at the puppet stage? All right, on the count of three, say puppets come out. One, two, three. I am so bored. I want to go see the sights and do something fun. You know, I think I'm going to need some money so I can live off it. Father, Father. Where are you? Daughter, whom I love, I'm here for you. What do you need? Dad, you know the money that I would receive if you were dead? Yes, the inheritance. Well, Dad, I want that money now. But, but, I'm not dead. Well, couldn't we just say you are, and I can have the money? I cannot wait until you die. I want to go have some fun with it now. Well, I guess you can have it now, if you must. Here, take it. But be careful not to spend it all, because that's all you're going to get. Daughter, daughter, wow, she's already gone. I'm sure going to miss her. Well, back to work. Let's party and have some fun. Yay, I'm dancing and dancing and having some fun. So much fun to see, so much to do. Wow, this is great. Hey, check it out. Mount Rushmore.
Rushmore. Wow, and there's Crazy Horse. Wow, and the Black Hills. They're awesome. But look at all the strange people out there. Man, I'm getting hungry, but I'm out of money. What am I going to do? I am getting more and more hungry. Oh, I wish my daughter would come home. I miss her so much. This is just not fun. Oh, I'm so hungry. Even the pig's food looks good. And this job is not fun. I need some food. But the pigs are eating better than me. I think it might be better if I could go home and see if my dad would hire me. The people who work for him eat much better. My dad will be mad at me. But what choice do I have? A mad dad would be better than starving. Oh, is that my daughter coming home? Daughter, daughter, I'm so happy you came home. Let's have a party. Aren't you mad? No, I'm just glad you're home. I didn't know what had happened to you, but now you're here. We must celebrate and have a party. Go get cleaned up, and I will get the party started. Dad, what is the party for? Your sister has come home. I don't have a sister. She left me to do all the work, and she treated you like you were dead. Why on earth would you have a party for her? Because I thought she was dead, and now is found. Just as I am glad you've always been here, and being such a good son, I'm glad she came home. We have to celebrate. Now come on, come with me and party. It's not a party without you. Okay, I will go, but I will not like it. Can we at least have cocktail wieners? Well, what party doesn't have cocktail wieners? Goodbye, everyone, well, and have, have a, a great, great week. week. As people, we lose things. Huh? We lose our remotes. Come on, come on. <laughs> we lose our glasses. Has anyone seen my glasses? Anyone? And lose our keys. Whoa. Keys. <laughs> keys? We even lose things that aren't things. We can lose face. Lose ground. Lose focus. Do I look blurry? Yes. And lose our cool. <laughs> we say things like, you snooze, you lose. I'm tired. He lost his shirt. Hey! And have you lost your mind? Many things get lost, but the worst thing we lose is our way. Hey! Uh-oh. 
And that's when it's time to search. Searching can be messy. Gross. Searching can be scary. Hey, a flashlight. <laughs> and searching can hurt. But in the end, a search is the only way to get found. Thanks. And this was under your couch. My remote. And found is the best way to be. God, awesome. Let us pray. Gracious God, be with us today. Help us to be led by your spirit and not by our own. Clear our minds of all that distract and let us know you more. Lord, we pray. Amen. If you hung around the office this week, you might have heard me shouting out my office door. Nothing bad, but I yelled out things like, he won a gold, he won a silver. And I was referring to my stepfather, my 86-year-old stepfather. He was competing in the World Senior Olympics this past year, past week. Once again, my 86-year-old stepfather. Someone thought yesterday he was my grandfather, and I was really happy to hear that. He's been competing in the Senior Olympics for many years, many decades, and he's enjoyed it very much, but he's had a rough last two years of injuries and being 86 creeping in. And so he didn't think he was even going to go to the Polish Olympics. And, but they called him. The U.S. Olympic Committee, Senior Olympic Committee, called him and said, we need you to go. We'll even help you get over there. See, he competes in so many events and he's that age, and there's not a whole lot of people still competing at 86, that he was sure to win a medal. And so at this point, he's won two gold, two silver, two bronze. He's placed fifth place twice. And I don't know what happened yesterday, but since my phone didn't ding, I don't think it was that good. And you wonder what that has to do with being lost and found? Absolutely nothing. That is the front story. But there's a back side of the, every story. And the back side of the story is him traveling over there. My mom has traveled with him most of the time when he traveled internationally. But at this point, she's tired of traveling with him internationally. It's getting harder. Partially, because he's 86. And he's set in his ways. As Becky will tell you, he has his certain routines, and if they vary from his certain routines, he's not always the most flexible. And some things have been stuck in his mind. And the biggest thing that is a barrier right now is to him is traveling is his phone. My... Uh, I think it was about 10 years ago, my mom, or 15 years ago, my mom convinced him to finally get rid of his landline and get a cell phone. But he was bound and determined he wasn't going to have a cell phone with any of those gadgets because he didn't need any of those gadgets. He didn't need email and all that stuff. Even though know, he does it, he didn't want it on his phone. He didn't want a phone that could take, be a camera. He didn't need that. He just wanted a phone to be a phone. And so he went searching for a phone that was just a phone. Maybe somebody out there has done that. And it's not that easy, is it? Because everything takes a picture now. And so he finally found a flip phone that would not take a picture that only is a phone. And it had to have been old enough 
And the problem is he just kept updating with batteries. And so as he was beginning to get ready to travel overseas, he found out his phone wouldn't work. And so my mom was telling him, you got to go get a new phone. Well, that's not going to happen. He likes his phone. He's put new, multiple new batteries in it. It still works. He knows how to use it. He doesn't want any gadgets. So he just convinced my mom that he would borrow somebody's phone when he got over there. He knew he had friends over there that were going to the meet. He figured that their cell phones would work over there. And so he'd be perfectly fine. He would call her the moment he hit the ground. So I called her last Sunday, because he had been there since Friday, traveled on Thursday, would have been there by now. I said, so how's Bill doing? And she said, well, I haven't heard from him. I'm like, oh, he didn't call when he got hit the ground? No, he didn't call. But the Polish Olympic Committee did call. Actually, they emailed at first. And they said a, a note on the email, is Professor Jankovic planning on showing up to the track meet? He hasn't checked in yet, and he's not in the hotel. My mom's looking at the itinerary of when he's supposed to be in there, when he's supposed to get on the bus to head to the uh, actual town that he's supposed to be competing in. And he's supposed to be there. She checks the plane stuff, and that actually arrived on time. She could track that. But after that, she has no more way to track him. And so she finally calls the Olympic commi Committee over in Poland. They have set up a guy to take care of all these older international athletes. And she's on the phone with him, and he says, give me his phone number, and I will call him. And she says to him, his phone won't work. And the response back is, he's of, of course, all phones work over here. As if we're not some backwards country that phones don't work. She's trying to communicate to him, and English isn't his primary language, and she doesn't know Polish, that it's just because it's that old. It's not you, it's him. So two and a half hours, she's sitting at the kitchen table right by the phone, not willing to leave. Because my mom is one of those people who panics about almost everything. So he's not just in some bus or somewhere else. He's in a ditch. He's dead. And he's never coming home. For two and a half hours, she's just fixated. And then she finally gets an email that says, we found him. It's okay. He's checked in. End of story. He's coming home in a couple days. He still hasn't called home. So I imagine as he gets off the bus in Racine, Wisconsin that's traveled from O'Hare, the conversation will be, how are things going? I hope, you know, and my mom will listen, but I don't think they're going to get all the way home before the lecture starts. She's even tried to incorporate all of us, and she said, you know, we need to gang up on him and tell him he has to change his phone. And I'm just like, yeah, good luck with that. Never going to happen. I'm not that stupid. He's not going to listen to me. Maybe if he comes out here and finds out he was part of a sermon illustration, he might actually just do it. But I imagine what that father had to be doing when he's sitting at the t waiting for his son. It obviously wasn't two and a half hours. It was much longer. 
weeks, months, years. Where he's wondering when his son, if his son will ever come home, if his son is dead in a ditch. All he wants is to have is contact and a relationship. And a relationship that was robbed from him by his son himself. His son, because of living, robbed his dad of life. And you hear the father, when he sees his son, he starts to run. And we don't have to imagine some track athlete running. We need to imagine somebody with robes. Probably a lot like this. A few more layers, probably. Trying to run after his son. The son, the robes would get caught in the feet, so he probably had to pick them up. Hold them high enough that they wouldn't catch on his legs or his knees. So it's probably a little undignified as he's running. And he's running to embrace his son. The son who wished him dead. All that has drifted away. Because there's rejoice. Paired with this story of the prodigal son is two more lost stories. The lost sheep and the lost coin, both in Luke. And we hear, we hear we hear them going after her, going after him. We hear the rejoicing that happens. The rejoicing when they find the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost sheep when they leave the whole entire flock and go after the one, which makes no sense. The lost coin, when they pull it up and they rejoice, they have this big celebration. But the prodigal son seems like he shouldn't even be rejoicing. It almost seems like he should get some kind of lecture first. Or at least, oh, I'm glad you're home. Now let me start to tell you where you went wrong. Like my stepfather's about to receive. This is our pause moment for this week. We know that we probably relate to somebody in that story a little bit better than others. Some of us are probably that young son who have drifted away. But probably most of us find ourselves as the other son and aren't always happy when the younger son comes home. The one who's been out and about, drifting away, causing havoc. But we need to remind ourselves that this is the Father's world. As the song goes. And then the Father only wants to embrace. I want you to take a pause this moment. First to ask yourself, how are you running away? And how are you allowing the Savior to embrace you? And how are you allowing the Savior to embrace everybody else with that radical love that knows no end? May you know the Savior's love today and every day. Amen. Our next hymn is If My People. Um, it's a call and response hymn, so it maybe looks a little odd in the book. Um, I'll sing the few words, and then you repeat it, and it grows into just a beautiful, um, it's just a beautiful prayer. Yeah. 
If my people, if my people call by my name, turn from evil and seek my face. If my people called by my name turn from evil and seek my face I will hear and I Let us join together in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll move into our time of offering.
clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with your free spirit. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. You may be seated, and I invite you into our brief order for healing. Our Lord Jesus healed many as a sign of the reign of God come near and sent the disciples to continue this work of healing with prayer, the laying on of hands, and anointing. In the name of Christ, the great healer and reconciler of the world, we now entrust to God all who are in need of healing. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for the gifts of life on earth, for our human bodies and all you have created. In your great mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, by the wounds of your Son we are healed. Bring your saving health to all people. In your great mercy, Amen. restoring God, your Son, Jesus Christ, brought the gift of healing and wholeness. Bring your healing presence now to all who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit. We pray for Linda, Carolee, Hazel, Charlene, Alan, Mark, Thomas, Donna, Orland, Pauline, George, Charlotte, Leona, Mary, Raleigh, Bill, Tricia, Florence, Lori, Nick, Christy, Zane, Mark, Tom, Karen, Gerald, Jeff, Kevin, Tim, Bobby, Michael, Glenn, Robert, Anna, Kathy, Arlene, Samuel, we lift up and pray as well for strength and healing for Liz Hamburg. We pray for guidance, comfort, and care for those who mourn. We pray for Vicki and her family, for Harold and his family, for Karen and her family, as well as for Larry and his family at the loss of his son, Steve. We pray and lift up also for, we pray for all military first responders and their families. In your great mercy, hear our prayer. God of great and abundant mercy, with your presence, sustain all for whom we pray. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We now invite forward any...